So we need to post the link to Yammer. Yeah, and I'm giving you another link of the YouTube, like of YouTube. Just a moment. Uh, okay. So, in chat, this is the broadcasting link. Right. Um, the, and this is the, there are two links now. The first one is for the YouTube. So. Just me, I'm saying this. Oh, okay. Hello. Yeah. Do you want to? I don't see the YouTube working. Why? Just a moment. It's working for me. Could you? I'll share the link again. Check it in chat. Yeah. It's working, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Hey. 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 So I think I'll hide myself from broadcast so you guys can start discussing stuff. Uh, just wait a second. Uh, shall we post a link on uh, Yammer? Yes, I did. Uh, for the Hangout, you mean? Yeah, and for YouTube, I'm posting as well. If okay. someone want to join the Hangout, just for watching. OK, cool. OK, perfect. So, who we have here? You, me, and Eileen? Yeah. There should be uh, Panagiotta, too. Yeah, I think some other persons wanted to join, too, as far as I know. Yeah, so we should wait a bit. 
because we were, I think, in a few minutes. Let's just set up. I have a friend here staying, uh, which is going to study in Paris next year, so uh, he's going to join us in five minutes. Okay, right now. Perfect. Yep. So I put it in a second. Hi. Hey. Any people show me? Okay, Alexandra. Uh, it's so dark here. I don't know if somebody hears me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Alexander. Hello. Hello. So, uh, Eileen, do you know how many people we are expecting? Uh, I know there were seven people signed up for the doodle today. Okay. Seven. Yeah. Maybe they are still sleeping. <laughs> As me woke up maybe ten minutes ago. <laughs> Just for informal chit chat. So Eileen, where are you coming? To UPS or uh, to UPS? Yeah, that's the thing. Cause uh, we were saying let's do a uh, like a public event for everybody going to France, but there's no meeting. Uh, Eileen, do you know how many people? We uh, I know there were seven people signed up for a doodle today. Okay. Already said it. Okay. Seven. Yeah. Maybe they are uh, no, still sleeping. Still sleeping. <laughs> As me woke up maybe ten minutes ago. <laughs> So I think where are you coming to UPS or uh, to UPS? Yeah, that's the thing. Cause uh, we were saying let's do a uh, like a public event for everybody going to France, but there's no. Uh, I know there were seven people signed up for the doodle today. Already said it. Seven. Yeah. I think they are. No worries. Still sleeping. That's <laughs> me woke up maybe 10 minutes ago. What's wrong with this? So, Jana, I think you're listening to a recording or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was into the, to the recording. I just want to turn off the video because I think it's irrelevant for now and we need the yeah. voice. Ah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, I agree too. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I still had the YouTube link open, apparently. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> or maybe we could say that we turn on the camera just the, the one who's speaking. I, I don't think it's very important. We already see some pictures and I, we just need. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So who's gonna start? So, um, yeah. I know, uh, let's say, uh, is there somebody not going to UPS? No, I guess to UPS. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! So I'm so relevant here. <laughs> yeah. See you, can enjoy. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> no. Okay, no. Uh, I think you can uh, you can even suggest any uh, anything uh, useful for France in general. I mean, in fact, that was my idea that I'm not focusing especially on UPMC unless it's so necessary. But uh, in general, in terms of accommodation, administrative things, and uh, so practical information, that's so handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, I think we can we can start just uh, asking. Uh, Random question. I mean, everybody that has some question just uh, can start. No, I think um, yeah, that's one one way. Just to introduce. Uh, I think uh, let's introduce ourselves first so that we can get an idea of like who and where are going and then. because there are not so many people. Eileen, Alexandra, and Vujana, and you. So, 
So I start with myself. I'm Han. Uh, that should be my last name, but uh, it's my first name for now. Um, I studied um, my first year in UPMC, so it's already done. I already left Paris, and right now I'm in Berlin for my next year. So uh, I stayed there. I enjoyed my time. So I'm here to give you some information that might be interesting for you. So. Cool. Uh, my name is Alexandra, and um, it will be my first year in uh, UPS, and my second year will be back in uh, Stockholm, KDH. Uh, I live here, but originally from Lithuania. Uh, I already talked uh, with some previous students, and I got some information, but it will be nice to hear more, and maybe there will come up new questions that I haven't been thinking about. Perfect. So my name is Aileen. I'm going to start at UPS as well. And I'm going for the second year to Trento in Italy. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, at the moment I'm still um, in Berlin in Germany uh, because I studied here before and going to move to Paris this Sunday. Getting excited. <laughs> Me too on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> okay. Who's next? Uh, okay, I, I'm Francesco. I studied uh, last year in uh, in Paris. Uh, uh, here at UPS. I'm gonna go to Berlin next year. In uh, I mean, in uh, some days. I don't know when, because I haven't got an apartment yet. Uh, so I'm just uh, waiting to get one or to get a student residence. Uh, for now, I'm enjoying my, my last time in Paris. So if you are coming here. Uh, even if you need uh, uh, like uh, somebody hosting you or what else, uh, I can do it. Uh, but I don't know till when I'm gonna stay, so uh, that's the thing. And I'm, actually, I'm now hosting a friend, uh, which is gonna start uh, at UPS uh, in, uh, in some days. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, I'm Filippo. I'm uh, at the first year of uh, ET. Uh, I study in Paris, and the second year I will study in uh, Alto, in Helsinki. And uh, I'm uh, already here in Paris, and uh, move. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> well, who is left? Uh, Panagiota? I'm sorry with the names. Hi, uh, my name is Panagiota. I am a second year student. Uh, my first year was at uh, Stockholm, and now we come to Paris. That's all. <laughs> are you the only one uh, coming to Paris for the second year? You know? No, we are four people, and uh, all of us we are from KTH. Ah, okay, good. Because <laughs> last year we just had Manfred, which is uh, was yeah, the only one. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's gonna it's gonna be fun. The, maybe the second year is uh, is is better than the first one. I hope so. <laughs> so um, I think uh, we are done with the introduction part. So let's start from the uh, left order. That is Eileen, then is Alexandra, Bujana, and Francisco is like. Uh, so it's Francisco and me. We are the former Parisians or French people here, or someone else also. It's just you and me, right, Francisco? Yep. OK. So let's start with the questions. Eileen. Uh, first question I have, uh, how complicated is it to open a bank account for a student? Because I just online I saw a lot of things like you need to show a bill for the last three months to get an account open and all this stuff. Uh, it's so shit. OK. <laughs> no. Uh, especially if you're, if you're, uh, since we are all, everybody of us is uh, European, mm -hmm. it's extremely easy. You just, uh, they suggest you to go to the, for, if you're studying at UPS, to go to the BMP in, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, uh, Orseville, which is the, the one where we started. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I did it last year, and I think it's uh, okay because it's, uh, let's say, close to the university, but it's not even that close, especially if you, just have to go almost uh, 
every day in the first days uh, when you need to open the bank account and go to sign uh, tons of papers and that's it. Uh, the thing you have to do is uh, either you open it there at uh, UPS or they say you can open uh, you can open it in the in the area you live. Uh, for example, uh, if you live in a city university, you can open the one in city university or in the other areas of Paris. Uh, um, actually, the, the good thing the good thing of uh, BMP Paribas is that uh, you can open a student account uh, and you have no fees for, uh, for every time you take out money in uh, all the Europe without mm -hmm. uh, paying uh, extra money. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it just requires some time because you need to go there, sign, uh, request the thing, need the, uh, the, the address where you live, and then mm -hmm. they can open the, the bank account, but they have to send you the, a letter at home, you need to receive it and bring it back and sign stuff. It takes uh, some uh, 15 days, uh, but uh, everything is like that in France. It's uh, especially in Paris because they do not want people to stay here and open bank accounts if they're not stay long. So uh, even for a SIM card, it's the same thing. They're going to send you something at home and you need to uh, activate it that way. Okay, we are going to talk about the mobile phone and everything later on. So for the bank, um, um, I'd like to say a few things because, okay, none of us are from UPMC or going to UPMC, but for UPMC it was quite easier because um, uh, we, uh, the file, the student file that is required for opening a bank account, everything was sent to nearby agency. And just to let you know that here in France everything is, for the bank thing is, with agency, I never saw that this in US, but here it comes to agency, so there will be one person assigned for your account sort of thing, so he or she will be your contact person in case you need some help, or in case you need a letter, or in case you need anything, so you need to know that person well and have his or her phone number and contacts, that's it. So I had my bank account both in BNP Bahibar and also in LCL, which uh, two are uh, I saw it most popular for students, mm -hmm. and it's true that um, it's free for two years. So for BNP Paribas, if Francisco, if I'm wrong, uh, they they provide two cards, right? One for uh, taking out money, and an another card is for no, 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 they, online. That no, 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 they, they, it's the same. Basically, they give you a card, which is um, uh, they say a visa at the same time. Uh, it's cool because it's not a uh, let's say a, a real visa that you, you did not sign as it was a visa, but it is. So you can do even shopping online with that. Okay, then that's it. So, but they provided me two cards, and the other one LCL provided me one card which does everything. And uh, last year we had this facility uh, uh, both in uh, yes, it was in LCL. They provided 80 euros at the end of the academic year, I guess, if you keep the account open, so you get 80 euros doing nothing just to keep your account there. Uh -huh. so I, didn't, I didn't know that, but uh, in BMP they charge you, no, they they uh, give you 70 euros at the beginning and then they take out you 6 euros 30 per every month, so basically in the end if you arrive like uh, 0 euro, like uh, if you didn't pay anything. So it's uh, it's for free. I think then it varies uh, based on locations or something. Uh, so, yeah. but you should ask your agency if you have something offer for students. And most of the banks they comes with insurance because for your residence, for your house, there is an um, insurance thing that has to be there. Uh, so uh, you can for for LCL we got it for one one euro, one euro. So. Uh, it's like so easy to get it done and it's not so complicated because once you have the account it comes uh, with insurance so uh, you have everything there. Mm. And no, for, B for BMP Bariba, uh, especially, I mean I'm talking for the one in Orsay which is the, the one they suggest you, uh, you can have uh, the insurance for the house and for the mobiles and uh, for any electronic device uh, uh, for free within the, the student uh, uh, agreement, let's say, within the student account. Okay, anything else for the financial thing? I mean, for bank opening account? Mm, no, yes. 
uh, a, a suggestion for everybody. When you come to, to Paris, try to have uh, all your, let's say, most important documents, which is uh, ID card, uh, driving license, uh, or like uh, this, uh, the healthy card, uh, or the student agreement, and these things, uh, at least on Dropbox or uh, somewhere on your, corp on your computer because maybe they require you and you can uh, just go and print them out uh, and or give a copy to 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 anything because uh, uh, they require many situation okay then I would like to add uh, because it's financial discussion so uh, if you are working <laughs> in um, uh, like I worked for a few months so you had to take care of your tax and everything so you you can you have to file a tax uh, number. So it's I'm providing you the link in case you need to look into in details. You can use the Google Translate. That's easy. So I'm posting the link. This is for all tax materials in case you are working. Then you need to provide tax. But in case if you are just uh, an intern, then it's not included in the tax thing. But if you work outside, then this is the link that comes handy for the, uh, for dealing with taxes. And uh, uh, each arrondissement, small, like in Paris or outside somewhere, it should be that uh, there will be one uh, tax office taking care of your thing. So you need to go there and see how you can do this. And they don't speak uh, English, and that I can assure you. So just be prepared for that. And. Um, mm, yeah, that's it for the financials. And now, uh, uh, what else? The next one. Who is next? Alexandra? Uh, yes. Uh, is it possible if you tell us about more about this? Uh, uh, when you have an apartment, uh, you, you can apply for some... Uh, uh, so, CAF. Okay, I got it. What are the CAFs? Ca I don't know. Yeah. What was uh, CAF is uh, money you can get from the uh, state of Paris, from the country of Paris. Uh, if you have a, an apartment or a residence, anything, you can uh, apply to that and uh, actually you get money according to the place where you live, which means uh, if you are in an apartment uh, alone or if you are in a room uh, within other people, it, it, it depends on, uh, it, it changes the, the quantity of money you get. So you can get from uh, 80 to 200 something euro per month. Uh, I would say, I, I don't know, know about CAN, but uh, most of the people from UPS uh, didn't get the money uh, within uh, a short time, but uh, they got it uh, all at the end of the, of the year. But, uh, and I don't know if anybody got, uh, got it, but uh, I know some of them uh, got at least uh, 100 something euro per month. So it, it varies and it's uh, a lot of papers, a lot of uh, documentation you, you need to provide them. Uh, and and sometimes you have to go in the morning, queue and uh, do, do, do this stuff, but uh, at least it's worth it. And this thing can only happen if you have a regular contract, for, uh, for sure. Uh, so it depends uh, on the landlord or on the house you're living in. Because uh, if you, for example, you're staying by somebody and he doesn't, he doesn't want to, to make you a contract or I don't know, for example, you're like, uh, let's say, sort of illegal, you cannot apply to, to CAF. But uh, these are other things. But I know that in Paris uh, there are a lot of these situations. Okay. Um, just to make things, uh, if you are living within Paris, uh, then uh, in City University, uh, in the month of uh, October, November, until I think end of November, uh, there is a, a booth sort of thing for CAF. I did it there, and my, most of the um, students from UPMC, they also went there, City University, to apply for the CAF. So before you have the CAF, you should have your uh, attestation for uh, residence. So you will get it when you have the residence. So in case you are staying in a cruise residence or your personal, uh, I mean, private accommodation, you should check that if you can get the CAF because sometimes for private accommodation, they don't provide this. So uh, to, to be able to get benefited from CAF, you need to check that. 
and you can in, you you can go to city university you can apply there with all the documents and that's pretty easy because uh, they know if you have any questions they are going to answer instantly but it's a long queue and i remember that we had to miss uh, one class because it's always in the weekdays and we always had classes in the morning so uh, mm -hmm. i needed to do that so i went there uh, that's it. Uh, but for the money, yes, um, you get the money. So the money doesn't come for the first month of your contract, so it starts from the second month and it takes around three months to get your first um, installment. But I, I was lucky, I got it from the beginning. I mean, within three months I got my first one and until the end of my contract, uh, residence contract. So you will constantly get this, and this is the money uh, for us. I think I, I think it's the same for everyone. It's it works like this. So you provide them your uh, documents and uh, bank account and everything, and they are going to uh, give the money to your residence, not to your bank account. So each month you will be paying less than your required amount. So if you have three hundred uh, euro per month as your rent, so they will be subsidizing, for example, 100 euros to your residence, and then uh, you have to pay 200 euros. And you can check your accounts and your status, your, or you can contact them uh, through their website. It's CAF.fr. I provided you the link, so it's the same for everyone. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Hope it's clear. If you have anything, you can ask. Is it also possible to go there if I'm not staying in a residence? Yeah, for private accommodation, you can also apply for CAF, but you have to make sure that your landlord uh, allows this sort of things. And sometimes mm -hmm. there are some people who doesn't. And you said that it was somewhere in October or November. Yeah, yeah. actually, this is a good thing because uh, uh, listen to that because in UPS uh, they do not say anything to that because uh, uh, the secretary we have, uh, uh, Muriel. Uh, Let's say it's not that uh, social uh, social network active, like uh, other other people like Nina, for example, in Germany. Uh, so basically, you have to do it all by yourself. Uh, and uh, uh, we didn't know anything about CAF and this stuff uh, until somebody asks uh, uh, for it. So if you can get this uh, info for Can from Can, uh, just uh, take them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you have me there in the Yammer, so just in case of CAF, I think I, I can help you with that in, with the information and process. Uh, uh, what else? So who is next? Uh, is it possible to ask one more question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, sure. No, it's about, I was reading in the UPS uh, uh, website that they have, uh, they provide those different kind of... Uh, uh, sport activities. I would just want like a swimming pool, gym, and all this stuff. Um, it's well, like a it, free or how it works. <laughs> wait a second. It all depends uh, where you live. For example, do you live close to the campus? No, I live in La Cite, in the in the city. Okay, so th there is no way you. I mean, it's not worth you. You stay there in the campus to do activities and this stuff because. It's like 25 kilometers from the center of uh, the, the Paris. So basically, as soon as you finish lessons, you try to escape from, from that. And you try to go back to Paris. Because, uh, uh, for example, from uh, a certain time, which is 8 PM, there are no buses at all in the campus and these things. And uh, if, if you leave, for example, in Cité Universitaire, they, it's full of uh, activities like there is a gym, uh, uh, outside there is a huge uh, garden where to pe a lot of people go running. Uh, there are pitches for football and uh, volleyball. And uh, in every arrondissement in Paris, there are sport activities you can do and practice. Uh, it just depends on the load work you have to do. Because, uh, for example, uh, last year in the first semester we had a lot of stuff to do and nobody could... Uh, uh, let's say oh, oh, have all this time to to mm -hmm. take activities and practice and this stuff, and basically every spare time we had, we just uh, used to wander around the city and uh, go out, uh, grab some some beers and these things. It just depends on what what are your plans. I mean, no, I mean uh, for example, as I know for me, it should work. I need I need to gym or do some things instead, not just to 
to uh, to study because then I'm getting like a crazy, you know. You, you just uh, but no. I really thought uh, if you go to an, an, another country, it's also nice to explore and all this stuff. But uh, no, no, no. Yeah, I can get, I can get. But my suggestion is you do it inside uh, Paris, not in the in the campus, because after that you would have like uh, an hour, an hour or something of uh, commuting, of commuting, and so there is no point in doing that. Uh, if you are living within Paris, then uh, each arrondissement they have this um, gym and they have a uh, swimming pool, so it's it's not that expensive. So you can find your close by one, and then you can subscribe there, and you can go and you can do a sports uh, if you like. And if I'm not wrong, in uh, Node Paris in on Yammer last year, I posted a, a link to <coughs> um, these uh, sports in Paris. I, I don't remember what. Uh, a, a friend told me, and it should be like that. Every around this month has uh, its own center where they do activities, sports, uh, uh, play board games, uh, and this stuff. So you can basically go there, pay something like uh, 20 euro per month, which is uh, basically nothing, and uh, and then do whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. But in case in case you you need the link and you could you cannot find just draw me a line. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Francisco. I'm giving one link that's uh, just for Paris, so uh, it, you should be able to find some practical information there as well about sports and everything. So that, are are you getting the link that I'm posting? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Francisco is there, Bujana. Hello. Hi. Uh, did you have any questions? Is the mark working? Oh, no. Uh, I would say that we we don't need to go in order. I mean, anybody that has a question related to what we are talking is better if yeah. they say. Sure. So just feel free to ask. No, my mic was working before. Now it is again. Um, I had a question about it. you said you had a job to come. Yeah. And you had to pay taxes. Was that difficult, or did you have? What did you have to do? What, what information did you have to be able to do that? Okay, so basically, it's not that uh, crazy complicated. But um, so, if you uh, if you are working, well, of course, you will be working part time. So you will have contract, and um, the employer they will be asking you to. Well, I mean, they will do the tax thing. I mean, they will deduct the tax from your salary at the end of the month. So the complication comes when you need to file that your income is that, and you uh, you have you have this employment, and then you need to file that one. So it's good to have this because then you are fully okay with the papers. Uh, so all you need to do is you need to save all of your documents, your pay slip, and everything, and uh, it's uh, it's. Around uh, March, April, you have to file this um, tax return application. So just to just keep remember that during that time, you need to go to the website and you need to you need to download the form, or you can also get the form from your local administrations, and then you need to uh, give them your payslip, your details, and everything. You will know it, so it's not that complicated. So just it's around uh, March, April. There is the deadline. You will find it in the website that varies every year. So uh, if you check that one, you. you okay, will... the same in Netherlands. So I'm familiar with that process. Thanks. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Anyone yeah. else having questions? Um, no, I guess. Okay, then I. Uh, sorry, I have a question. I yeah. want to ask you. Uh, I know that if you uh, have to find an apartment by your own, you need to have a guarantee, someone that guarantee for you, and this person should be a resident of France or something like that. Do you know if you can find any other way to find? The thing is that. Yeah. The thing is that it changes a lot. It varies because uh, 
Uh, some people requires uh, the some landlords requires you to have a a guarantee or somebody earning money, somebody earning at least uh, three times uh, uh, your monthly uh, uh, what you have to pay in a month. Uh, while some others do not require anything, they just want you to give them uh, one month or two months uh, in advance uh, and. Uh, uh, to be sure that you do not escape, let's say, uh, while uh, somebody else uh, do not even uh, want to make your contract. Uh, it just depends uh, on the situation uh, and the agencies and the uh, and the people you find. That's the thing. Okay, so in case that you don't have someone uh, like a French resident to guarantee for you, you can find. Uh, this guarantee from bank or something? Do you have an idea? Well, uh, for example, uh, last year when I was looking for apartments uh, and I went to some agencies, uh, most of them asked for a guarantee, while others said, okay, if you do not have a guarantee, we just need you to give us the, the last uh, three months of uh, earning from your parents in Italy, and uh, um, and uh, uh, you need to open a bank account and put uh, 4,000 uh, euros in it uh, and just live there till you leave, something like that. So they return you this money at the end? Yeah, 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 yeah. you do not pay. For, uh, you just need to have them, let's say, locked. You cannot touch them. It's just a way for them to see that you're still there and you keep on living in the apartment. Okay. But uh, actually, I think it's something that it's uh, it changes uh, from every uh, okay. company you go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. No worries. Um, about the transportation, Francisco, you should highlight um, a bike, and I'll be talking about public transportation. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, you can start with. Uh, uh, well, uh, I think it's uh, we. It, it changes a lot because uh, you were in uh, in the center of Paris from UPMC, yeah. while uh, while we were in uh, in in the fifth area, uh, which is a lo uh, way outside from Paris. Uh, to reach the campus, we need to take the. We have two possibilities, which is the suggested ones. Um, since we study in uh, IUT or say, which is uh, Right on the top of the campus. If you if you can uh, just uh, look for it on the on Google Maps uh, or uh, on Yammer, I posted a a, a folder with a lot of uh, useful info, and there is a a PDF with the campus uh, the map campus. Uh, since we are on the top of the campus, we can go two ways. Either you get off uh, in Massy Palaiso. And then you take uh, bus 916 B or C or 9110, and you arrive straight at the campus, which uh, like uh, 10 meters far, far from the university. Or you uh, go. Sorry, can you repeat uh, again the buses, the number of buses? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you you take the ROR B. You take the ROR B from the center of Paris or from wherever. And you arrive in uh, Massy Palaiso, which is, let's say, a quite big st uh, station. Uh, you get off uh, and you can take a, a bus, which is uh, 91.06B or C, not A or D because it goes somewhere else. Or you can take 91.10. And this way, you arrive straight to the campus. Uh, uh, I don't remember the name of the the the, the name stop. Something like uh, IUT or say probably, but you will you will notice because you will see the the huge buildings where there is is the DGTO uh, in Real Labs. It, it's let's say in the middle of nothing, but uh, it's a let's say quite cool place. Uh, the other possibility you have is you can remain on the ROR and, ar and arrive till Le Guichet, which is uh, the other stop, is the stop before Orsayville. 
but not not all the the ROR stop there. So that's the thing why you can decide uh, which way to go. And you arrive in Le Guichet, and you walk uh, 50 meters, and then you take bus number nine, which is uh, basically every 10, 15 minutes, and it's uh, quite okay. And it takes uh, like five minutes to reach the campus. So. Uh, Basically, the the two uh, the two trips uh, takes uh, more or less the same time. Maybe, maybe the one with the bus nine is faster, but it depends uh, on which uh, ROR you are because uh, not uh, all the ROR do all the stops. And so, if you are on the on the fast one, maybe stops just in Cipalezo and uh, it doesn't stop in uh, Le Guichet, so you can decide on which one to get off. And. Uh, yeah, that, that's all. Uh, it, it takes uh, more or less uh, 35, 45 minutes, uh, if you're lucky, uh, from the center, from, uh, from let's say, from uh, Cité Universitaire. Uh, sometimes with uh, strikes, uh, or especially during the winter, or uh, bad days, uh, accidents, uh, and uh, problems on the uh, ROR, it takes uh, longer. Uh, so it's just up to you, and uh, I mean, you can use that time uh, either to read, uh, listen to music, uh, eat, uh, meet people, especially if you take the same uh, with friends. Uh, it's a good thing to, if you have uh, group meetings or this stuff, you can uh, use your time. And uh, the prices is a. Uh, ah, okay, uh, sorry. Um, okay, I don't know how old are you, but. Uh, uh, there is two things. Uh, if you take, a, uh, since it is in uh, area five, uh, and if you come from the center, you need to pay from uh, the center, which is the zone one to zone five, and uh, it should be around uh, four euros something, maybe five euros, one way. Uh, so the good thing you can do is, uh, especially when you arrive, you can do an Avigo, which is the, the transportation card. You just need to go to some station, they ask for a, for a photo, you pay 5 euro if I'm not wrong, and they give you this Navigo and you can recharge it. And uh, you can uh, take either a week ticket or a month ticket. And uh, the week ticket should be 30 something euro, 35. And the monthly one should be around uh, 120 something, uh, 110 maybe. And uh, what do you suggest? But uh, yeah, uh, this is for everybody. If you're younger than 26 year old, you can apply for, it's called Imagine Air. And uh, this is like sort of. Uh, uh, transportation cards for young people. You can check. You can check on the on the website of the. Um, I'm providing you the link. Is there? Yeah. Okay. Of the RATP. Uh, you have a week. Uh, se uh, sorry, a ticket se uh, part of the website where you can find anything. But the problem uh, for this is that for the Imaginaire, you can go to almost any station. Ask for the Imaginaire ticket. They will give you some uh, papers. You can read them and uh, you can fill in with the form with all your your data, your personal data, your uh, your age, uh, where you live. Uh, you so you need a place uh, where to live because they're gonna send you back to you in uh, some twenty days probably. And but why, once you're done with that, uh, you you're gonna receive this uh, Imaginaire card, and which is uh, for the whole year, and it's uh, like more, less than half price, like six seven hundred euros, which is quite good. It's me. I mean, it's like uh, six months uh, of uh, Navigo. And I think you can also apply for it online now, on the website. You don't have to go to a station. Are you sure of this? Yep, that's a new feature. They, if you're not a customer, if you're just a new customer, you can apply for it online, but uh, you still need a residential address and a French bank account to fill in. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, I didn't know about this because my friend is uh, doing it on the 
on, let's say on the old way, he like is going to the station, taking the 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 form and uh, filling it uh, and this stuff. But anyway, you will need to have a French bank account because they're gonna take you uh, six, 70 euro per month uh, from it, and uh, you're gonna have all your data and uh, have an address because they're gonna send it back to you at, at your home. But uh, uh, it's uh, I mean it's pretty it's worth. Uh, because if you're leaving early, you can uh, stop it, and they're not gonna charge you the, the the left month. So if you're leaving in May and you still have to pay two other months, they're not gonna charge you. So it may be even cheaper than 700 euros. And with that, you can go anywhere in the in the old uh, pa uh, Grand Paris, which is the from era one to five. You can take the Funicolaire de Montmartre. You can. Uh, uh, take every transportation, which is uh, buses, night buses, uh, ROR, metro, and in some periods you can even go for free in the uh, Ile de France. And uh, ah, and at the same time you can go for free at any airport, uh, uh, both Orly and um, uh, Charles de Gaulle, but not to the to the one uh, of BV, which is the one from uh, Ryanair because it's private. Yeah, but, and the weekend uh, is free. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you're more than 25 years, then it's basically the best to take this month's uh, course. Yeah, yeah uh, more, more than 26. Yeah, if you're 26, it still uh, should be. Yeah, it's yeah. valid. But yeah, otherwise, uh, the best option is to do the, the, monthly, the monthly one. And uh, because in case you can even stop when you go, uh, you go back home for let's say for Christmas or for those periods, because you're not gonna pay for that. What do you mean? Yeah, and if you are if you are working, and then you can get uh, because the French law allows uh, the employer to, I mean, it's mandatory for them to subsidy uh, subsidize the transportation. So if you are if you are employed, then uh, they will be providing you rebate, so you need to, when you recharge uh, monthly, then you need to keep that sleep and you need to provide it to your employer and they will be uh, giving you money back at the end of the month to your account, just for those who will be working. Uh, well, Cam, I don't know. I was by you for the first uh, the, the first year or the first semester, but for UPS guys, it was uh, let's say quite demanding, and uh, uh, very few of us were working the first semester. So, uh, I mean, just people that has the, their own business or their activity. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, since some people were asking if it was possible to get a part-time job or these things, uh, uh, let's say just. Uh, uh, take your time, uh, evaluate the courses, let's see how much is demanding. Because since it's, uh, let's say, um, uh, the, maybe this is the third year they're doing this, uh, this university, these courses, uh, they're changing a lot. And for example, courses that were in the first semester, they're going to put on the second and vice versa. So it's still something uh, that is not uh, uh, regular every, every year. So maybe it could be totally different from last year too. Yeah, I agree. It's like a huge course load. You have to stay the whole in, uh, whole day in the university, and you will literally have no time to go work. So that's the thing. Uh, sorry, can I ask, where is the collocation center in Paris? Sorry. Where is the collocation center? Because in KTH we yeah. work a lot in the collocation center, and it was very useful for us. Did something um, like for that happen also. Yeah. yeah, these things were, uh, were it was totally different from uh, UPS and uh, and UPMC. If I'm not wrong, I remember people from UPMC going uh, pretty, uh, oh, pretty uh, usually to uh, to the UPMC, right? To the collocation center. Yes, for UPMC, we had to go there on each Monday. Uh, because we had a business development course, uh, I mean the project there, so we used to meet there. 
and at the colocation center you can actually get some uh, rooms for free because uh, if you if you ask the for assistance i'm providing you the email so if you ask her that you need a place to discuss something for a meeting or something then you can ask in the email and they will confirm if they have any free rooms and you can book it for a few hours um so every yeah, time you I have to book at CLC? No. You have to book a place at CLC? No. 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 Ah. Just if you want to yeah. meet with the group, for example, or going there to study or work, uh, whatever. Okay, because uh, in Stockholm we have that, like, we were there daily and we work more than five hours per day in CLC and it was a very good uh, place no, for us. In, uh, <laughs> in Paris is is totally different because since the, the university is in the campus, you're gonna have in the university, I don't say less on every day, but uh, almost. And uh, I don't know how many you will be this year, but last year we were 12, which is, uh, let's say, a very low number. Uh, mm -hmm. So we were pretty good in the CLC, because if the, the biggest room they have, it's maybe for 20 people, okay. maybe less. Okay. So, uh, so um, I don't know if this year you will be a lot of people, but in that case, uh, I don't know how they're gonna do it. But l last year we were in uh, in the CSC every Monday to work for BD Labs uh, courses, and mm -hmm. uh, let's say it, it's um, it's really good because it's a uh, it's uh, not as big as the one in uh, in Helsinki, for example. But uh, there are some companies working, uh, the, all the, the staff from the EIT ICT labs, uh, and uh, uh, you have the, some rooms where to work even with your group, uh, as Khan said, for, uh, you can book them uh, in advance, for example, if you need to go there working uh, with your group. Or um, what else? Uh, yeah, you have the, uh, the, the bad thing is that there are no canteen there. So when you when you stay there, usually if you have lesson, they're gonna provide you the food uh, like uh, sandwiches or like uh, the professor is gonna uh, take you to some places where you're gonna have to eat uh, like uh, I don't know McDonald's, uh, Subway, Chinese restaurant uh, or a uh, Basque restaurant. These places. Uh, yeah, but it's it's good and you uh, you're gonna have free coffee for uh, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thanks. Ah, and uh, it's uh, in Place d'Italie, which is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 10 minutes uh, from the Cité Universitaire, and it's uh, even maybe 15 minutes from the center, maybe 10 minutes from the center. Which, and it's in a very nice area. It's, the, and, uh, it's close to the, the, the Chinatown, too. Yeah, I have seen where is it. Thanks. Ah, and it's open from uh, eight-ish uh, to uh, six p.m., but just on uh, on work days. You, it, it's not open during the weekend, so it's uh, it's a it's a bit of shame because if you need to meet with your group during the weekend, it's not possible. Yeah, for us it was open also in the weekend, so it was very very useful. Okay. That's crazy. <laughs> Thank but, you. But it's uh, if it is uh, if you just want to go to uh, to that and stay there working even after lesson. Uh, if you are inside, you can stay there till even uh, midnight or whenever, and you can just get out. Okay, got it. Thanks. And for the CLC, the Edurum works there, but they also have their own uh, access point. But for that, you have to ask for username and password each day, I guess, um, at the reception. Ah. Yeah. Um, any other questions we have here? Ah, yeah. Wait a second. We were talking about transportation. Yeah. So I could uh, talk about uh, the Lib. Um, basically, uh, Paris is as the best uh, a bike sharing service in all the world, which is called Velib. Uh, Velib. Velib. I'm gonna I'm gonna share you the link. Uh, there are 25,000 bikes around Paris with more than uh, 1,800 stations. Uh, 
So basically, there is one every two or three hundred meters, and uh, you can you can uh, apply for that. You can uh, do either a one day ticket, which is one euro seventy, or a one week, which is eight euros, or you can do the one year, which I suggest you if you're gonna stay one year, which is just twenty nine euros. And uh, if you are younger than 26, you have for 45 minutes instead of 30 minutes. And uh, otherwise, it's uh, 39 or 29 according to the time you're using it. And basically, it works that you can take out a bike from any station you want, use for either 30 or 45 minutes for free, and then put it in, leave it in every other station, and that is going to be for free. If you go over 30 or 45 minutes, you're going to pay either 1 euro or 2 euro or 4 euro according to the time you're keeping it. But, I mean, there is no meaning because there are so many stations, you can always change it and uh, leave it and take another one or take the same after 2 minutes. So you mean uh, it will be free uh, if you use uh, around 30 minutes, but if you want to use more time... Uh, for well, one year ticket costs 29 euros, or? No, 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 wait. The, either the one ticket, the one day, or the one week, or the one year, there's no difference. You you always have it for either 30 or 45 okay. minutes for free. And then if you keep it longer, you pay, uh, you pay money, extra money. Okay. But as, as I told you, I wouldn't say that it never happened, but almost. Because uh, uh, you're gonna have uh, your uh, lot of station around you. You have even the mobile application to see where they are, to see how many places they have. If they are full, you can uh, require for other 15 minutes for free. And so basically, you you never go over than uh, that amount of time. And uh, if you and if you want, uh, in uh, there are some stations uh, around the city. Like for example, there is one even in front of uh, the CLC, which are co called Veli Plus. And if you bring take the, the, the bike there, you earn 15 minutes. So it means that next time, instead of having 45, you have one hour. If you bring it back another time, you have one hour 15. And, and you keep, can keep on accumulating uh, time and then use it uh, another time. Mm -hmm. But if I'm gonna share you, uh, or maybe Khan did it, yeah, uh, I'm gonna share you the the link for everything and any question you need to you have about Velib, I can uh, tell you. And uh, trust me, for Paris, uh, for every distance uh, less than six kilometers is the is the fastest way, and especially at night if you wanna come back home uh, and there are no metro and there is just uh, shitty night buses, you can uh, take the Velib anywhere and it's uh, way fastest. Perfect. I love to buy. <laughs> yeah, for the Velib and before you take out the bike, make sure you check the bike because sometimes the tube is not okay and uh, some people, they, they, they put the bike in some way that is not usable, so make sure you should check that. Well, uh, I think the last topic we're going to have is uh, important uh, for mobile phones and everything. Do you think we should discuss? Sure. Um, Francisco? Yeah, what was your, your experience? Okay, for mobile phones, um, I used to have free mobile. That's the operator's names, even though it's not free. So, uh, so it's like uh, you pay every month. And I just uh, bought a SIM card because I already had a phone. So free mobile, uh, I used it. It was quite uh, good for me because you can, with my contract, it was the lowest contract, I think, two euros per month. So with that, I can call two hours for any French numbers and um, 50 international countries, including US and Canada and China, as I think. And you get unlimited text message, um, internet. I don't know how much it was, 50 or 100 megabytes. That's nothing, but uh, it was okay with me because I was always with Wi-Fi. 
So that's the operator that I used. If you think that it's okay yeah. with your plan. Um, actually, it depends on uh, the, quanti the quantity of uh, megabytes or gigabytes you use. For example, uh, Khan lived in the in the center and had the university in the center, so maybe in that case it, it was better for him to not have the the three G uh, or not not those many megabytes. But for example, I used to go to UPS and it takes at least uh, forty five minutes to one hour every day. So in that in that ca in that uh, case, it's useful to have a a three G connection. So to use uh, to maybe even do tethering uh, with your computer or just to tell friends if there are strikes uh, or whatever. Uh, in that case, I use the BNDU, which is uh, from the company called Buig, uh, and uh, it is they have different plans. I did the one which is uh, uh, 19 euros, uh, uh, 20 euros, 1990, something like this. And uh, with that, you have uh, three gigabytes, uh, uh, unlimited calls in France, uh, unlimited SMS in France, uh, and you have uh, uh, unlimited calls to uh, 42 European uh, countries and uh, China and th these places uh, to the um, to the home phones, to the fixed phones, uh, not to the to the mobiles. So, it was it was pretty good for me because uh, I use it uh, for example when I was in on the ROR uh, coming back home I used to call my parents uh, or my relatives to say hey, I'm okay and so I was like uh, saving time instead of uh, having to do it while, while I was at home and uh, but otherwise there is a, another good brand which is called uh, SFR uh, SFR and. Uh, with that one, you can do for nine euro ninety, uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, yeah, you, you you can do the um, you have two uh, hours. Two, two hours of calls. Uh, you have uh, unlimited, two unlimited uh, calls in France and SMS, and uh, two gigabytes. Yes. Yeah, two gigabytes. Uh, can did you provide the link? Yes, I provided um, free mobile plus B and U. I'm 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 sharing the 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 SFR one. Uh, just no. Just SFR uh, red. Wait a second. Uh, red plus mobiles. Ah, yeah. Uh, actually, I don't know how it works uh, in the other countries where you live, you, where you come from, but for example, you. Uh, here in Paris, you cannot go to a comp uh, to a mobile company, uh, to a shop, to a physical shop, uh, because you have to to do it on online, and they're, you're gonna provide uh, your data, and they're gonna send you at home. But okay, I'm sharing the link. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. so just to add one more thing with the mobile, and then uh, we are almost close to one hour session. Mm -hmm. So we'll be uh, ending up soon. So uh, for mobile data, um, most of the operators, they have their Wi-Fi access points around the city. Uh, if you want to save your data, you can check sometimes. If you have Wi-Fi access points nearby, that it works with uh, your phone. Mm -hmm. Even if I had uh, some troubles with that, I, I, for example, with the free, I had a, co uh, a code, but uh, sometimes it's work, uh, sometimes it's not, and let's say it wasn't the best thing in the world. Yeah. So I guess we are almost done, because um, do you have any other questions? Ah, wait a second. Wait a second. There is a, a good promotion for b and You get... Uh, Free phone phone calls, SMS and MMS in France, uh, and uh, the uh, unlimited calls to the 55 uh, destinations. You have uh, SMS and calls uh, from uh, the uh, uh, from uh, the other countries to France uh, through Wi-Fi, and uh, three gigabytes uh, of uh, 4G connection for 15 euros. Uh, 
on the on the website till uh, for for uh, just uh, for the next week uh, till the eleventh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, thank you, Francisco. Uh, if you are looking for internship, sometimes at the end of your academic year for France, I use this website. I'm providing you the link. Some they have huge number of postings, so you can check that one. And in case of medical emergencies, uh, our, what do you call, uh, our insurance that is provided from EITI City Labs, um, I went to doctors uh, twice in one year. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they don't accept the card directly, so you have to pay first, and then you send the documents, everything you claim to to the insurance provider, our insurance provider, and then you will get the money back. Yeah, so yeah, wait, wait a second. Uh, uh, this is because you're not uh, European. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it, it changes, because uh, since I was European, I did the same thing as you. I went to the doctor, and then I sent all the documents to Helena, but she said she cannot do anything because since I'm European, I have the, the European uh, uh, okay. insurance, and European card, so uh, the EIT insurance works just for not European or for European to to let you pay the same amount you would pay in that country. So I know in France you can do something like apply to a green card or I don't know. I didn't do that, but uh, I uh, basically I didn't have my my money back from uh, the EIT because I paid as if I was uh, was in a European one. Okay, I didn't know that. So, uh, in case you need English-speaking doctors or you don't speak French at all, like me, a little bit, so there is one uh, website that I used for finding English information in Paris and Ile de France. So, this is the website. Um, I think, uh, yeah. I hope it was useful. Do you have any final questions? I have a question. If you can uh, wait, wait a second. Uh, can do we have a limit, a time limit, or how does it work? I mean, if uh, people have other questions, they uh, they should keep on asking. Do you think so? I uh, uh, we plan for one one hour, so we started at ten ten. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay. But I mean, if they have it's more questions, we can close it. Hours limit. No, it's like you can continue, but I will have to go, so I will leave you alone then. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, but I mean, uh, if they, if people have other questions, they can keep on asking at me yeah, at least. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Bujana, you have a question? Yeah, did you apply for a Carte Vitale, or did you use your Italian card, insurance card? Uh, for a what? A carte vitale, it's supposed to be the French, uh, French card? No, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I know you could apply. I didn't do that. And uh, I don't know actually how does how it works. Uh, I, uh, I, just, I just know it, it exists, uh, but uh, I didn't apply to. Okay. So for UPMC students, uh, the carte vitale, it came with, the, uh, with your... Uh, when you enroll for your courses, they will provide you. So it's, I guess uh, I'm not sure if it's the same for UPS, but oh, um, you're a freaking bastard! <laughs> so it came free with our enrollment. So you get the card uh, from your university. So and that's good because then you have two insurance and uh, you can use it anytime you want. So that cost it up. Even for your, if you already have a European insurance card, or only if you're not your uh, European. It doesn't matter. It it was it was for everyone because uh, uh, yeah. So are we summing up or we are staying? Hmm. Anybody having other questions? Ah, uh, and one question. Um. I'm flying on Sunday to what is the airport? Orsay? No, not Orsay. No, Orly. Orly, Orly, Orly. And I need to get to the La Cite. Uh, yeah. 
What it's, is the best way to go? Yeah, it's the, it's pretty easy. You just go to Cité. Uh, sorry, you just uh, get out of the um, the airport, mm -hmm. and uh, you have a, a a bus which is called the Orly bus. Mm -hmm. It should be eight euros if you don't have the Navigo, otherwise uh, it will be free. And uh, you uh, just get on it, and uh, it stops in uh, Danferrochro, which is the 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 previous stop of the ROR, and the second one is uh, Cité Université. So you can just get off at uh, Danfer, take the ROR, and the next station you will be Cité Universitaire. Otherwise, I know it makes a uh, lot of stops uh, this bus, and uh, it stops even. Uh, Closer to City Université, you can like uh, get off at uh, Stade Charletti or other places. Uh, it depends on which uh, house of the City Université you are. But if you look for Orly bus on uh, on Google or on the website, uh, you should you should have even the 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 bus stops it does. Okay, so Orly bus and you stop in the Ferro Cherro. I don't know how yeah. to write. And yeah. then you take ROR to the next station, which is La Cité. Yeah, a uh, direction uh, south is going to be the same way you're going to do for going to uh, uh, Paris Sud. Paris Sud, okay. Yeah. I can provide you the link anyway. Uh, wait a second. And I think that if you search in that, something like that, uh, it's easy to find uh, how you can go to any place if you put. Um, I think we lost her voice. Anyway, I provide you the link for the early bus. Oh, I see it. Perfect. And you have the the route uh, and uh, and uh, where it stops. Uh, and uh, wait a second. I don't know which uh, house you are, but in if you see. Switzerland, I live. I will live in uh, Switzerland house. Okay, I I do not know where it is. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, it stops in uh, Stade Charletti, which is pretty close to the um, to the the, um, the Cité Universitaire. Or either you stop at the main stop, which is Danfer Rochereau, and then you take the ROR-B and you get off uh, at uh, Cité Universitaire station. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how much uh, the ticket is uh, like one? No, not eight. expensive. Yeah, it's no. uh, eight euros. No, and then this ROR B. Ah, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, just an, a regular T plus ticket. Uh, yeah, um, seventy. Okay, so okay, I just to know because I don't know. Yeah. I anyway, speak French. I feel so many people talking about that um, it's difficult to speak English there. So. Nah, but I mean, I do not know anything uh, in France. I I do not speak French at all. Mm -hmm. And I managed to do almost anything. Let's say some people are, let's say, are a bit pissed off when you speak English, or some people try not to reply to you. But uh, I thought it was way worse. Okay. I mean, it's not like in uh, Helsinki or in the North Europe, but it's pretty okay. Here in Sweden, I mean, everybody speaks, so it's much more easier. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah. it's okay. All right, so uh, uh, good luck, everyone. I guess uh, for now it's okay. We have someone new here, Felicia. Hello. Hello. Okay, I don't know. Any anybody having other questions? Otherwise, I think. Uh, you can just uh, ask us uh, uh, directly or privately on Yammer or on uh, Facebook mm. or whatever. Okay. Um, and is it possible, uh, hopefully, to meet you guys maybe uh, next week if you're still in Paris? Yeah, uh, I will stay in Paris. I don't know till when, but probably at least uh, 10 days. So um, I think you can meet me there. Uh, just uh, drop me a line if you want to meet uh, or if you need help, uh, even for surgery stuff. Really? Are you sure? <laughs> I, met, I already met your friend here in um, 
in uh, in stop column. Which friend? Dimitris? No, 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 this is a Colombian guy. Ah, Miguel. Miguel, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was nice actually. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I don't have any question. Uh, Felicia, uh, I think you just joined a few minutes ago. Do you have any questions? Probably she has some problem with it. Okay, then. Um, I guess we'll sum up here. And I would like to thank S2S Network for helping us to have this Hangout session for you guys. And um, um, I'll be posting their Facebook link just to be updated and refer to your friends. And good luck with your studies and keep in touch. Sure, thank you so much for this uh, really useful uh, uh, chat. Yeah, I, I'm sorry that we didn't have this uh, video thing, but it's okay. We'll see you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye bye. 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 bye.